about I read a paragraph at a time and then I <laughs> Sorry, the bugs. <laughs> no, they like you. You're be nice all to the your wrong fans. That's like what kind of bug is it? Uh, I think it was a mosquito. Yes, that's definitely the wrong way. But I don't Oh, before I forget, uh -huh. I dressed for the occasion. Oh, you wore it. Yep, but I it's also too cold, so I figured I'd at least oh, let you know okay. that's what I was wearing. Oh, cause... okay, we're leaving this part in. Because <laughs> I put a lot of effort into my wardrobe. I may not put a lot of effort into my hair or how I appear to others, but my wardrobe, that's a big priority for me. Well, I guess since I'm going to leave this part in, we can dodge <laughs> in, but while I'm finding the spot which I meant to do beforehand, and then you know how come I was delayed. How about you go ahead and tell everybody a little bit of the the basics of ISTJ description and kind of a, why we're so different since I'm an INFJ <laughs> and you're an ISTJ. How about you go into a little bit of that while I'm finding it? Okay. So hello, audience. In case you didn't couldn't tell, my name is Paul. Um... Isabel and I actually met each other mm -hmm. a year and one month ago. Not exactly, because I believe it was August 3rd, 2022, yeah. when we last met. So this is the first time we've ever done a Facebook video call, so hope it's not too choppy. As far as what an ISTJ is, does your audience know much about the cognitive functions? Because if not, I can leave that out and just do basic descriptions. Not really. I haven't uh, studied enough myself to feel like I am, like I'm getting the hang of them, but I always like to be very well studied before I start teaching. So gotcha. I have not really covered that yet. Okay. Well, as long as you're aware that they are part of the official Myers and Briggs, like mm -hmm. I looked it up and everything. It's not just conspiracy theory. No. Okay. So um, the basic explanation of ISTJ without the cognitive functions I would say what makes or breaks our type is our memory. Usually we have by far the best memory of all the types. The ISFJ comes pretty close, but I think the ISTJ ever so slightly edges it out because we're much more about uh, facts and empirical data. So we focus a lot more on statistics, whereas the ISFJs are usually a bit more about harmony and inclusion. I mean, mm -hmm. we try to be... But oftentimes we don't know how, like oftentimes for us, we have to ask people, hey, how are you doing? What can I do to help you? Whereas the ISFJ has more of a natural grasp at it. INFJs do too, but that's leaning into cognitive functions territory. So we'll get to that another day. Um, I would say our biggest weakness as ISTJs is that we're not very innovative. We're not the types that like trying out new things very much. We're very much creatures of habit. And so if we're put into unfamiliar situations, usually the best way that we can get over that is by knowing the logistics ahead of time, which apparently all SJs are like that, but I think we're the worst of the SJs because we really want to make sure we're prepared and efficient and that nothing crazy is going to happen. Sounds good. Well, that's a pretty darn good rundown. And uh, oh, thank you. It's, you're going to see uh, a lot in this description that I think you're just going to be like, oh, yes, this is true. <laughs> I don't think there's much that you're going to disagree with, but I am very curious to hear you expand on why this is you being an ISTJ and why this description fits you so much. I think that's Well, probably... actually, I'm an ENFP, so... That's right. I need to get this right. Let me get the ENFP description, right? <laughs> you want to tell your you want to tell your audience the backstory behind how I officially figured out that I was an ISTJ or do you want me to explain that? You are the guest on the channel. So, why don't you go ahead? <laughs> okay. So, um I was when I first started learning about Myers-Briggs in 2012, I thought I was an ESTJ because as you can probably tell, I'm a bit more outgoing and boisterous than most ISTJs, but I mistook the E for being outgoing when technically outgoing and extroversion are actually two different things. Mm -hmm. You can be an outgoing introvert and you can be a shy extrovert. Yeah. 
Um, again, it all leads to those elusive cognitive functions being different. But basically the gist of it in layman's terms is that ESTJs are much more assertive and dominant. They like to like assert themselves and say like, this is the way that it is. They like mm -hmm. being in charge. They like being on, on top of the corporate ladder, so to speak. Hopefully they don't fall over. Uh, as far as the ISTJs, we're more likely to be the servant or the butler. Like, we like to do more behind-the-scenes type of stuff. We do have the better memory than the ESTJs. They're so busy thinking about how things are effective, they often skip yeah. the necessary steps to get to the outcome. Whereas we're mm -hmm. like, okay, first we do this, then we do that, then we do that. Whereas the ESTJs are just like, it's got to be done. No ifs, ands, or buts. And they're also much meaner than we are. Like, we at least have some semblance of emotional depth, whereas they have, like, basically none. So they're usually the, the ones that'll tear you apart. We might accidentally tear you apart, but then apologize later, whereas the ESTJ is going to say, I don't give a darn about your feelings. They're just subjective dopamine anyway. Or whatever the phrase is. I think you were explaining the ENFP, though. The ENFP oh, was reference? I? Yeah, you were you were explaining that, wasn't it? Oh yeah. So uh, actually, I'm an ENFP. So, um, <laughs> I got tested by two different sources. Now, admittedly, none of them are 100% officially certified, but one of them took courses in Myers Briggs certification. And the other is in the process of taking certification. So the first was on Kim's channel. It's literally just called Kim now. Very, very hard to find. I had to literally scroll oh, through hundreds yeah. of comments just to find her name. And then uh, Type with Mongolian Mindset was the second. They both use very different methods for typology, but both of them came to the realization that I was an ISTJ. There is one person on the internet, won't say any names, Besides, he's probably changed his name since that comment, who thought I was an ENFP because when Isabel and I were going to go visit each other, I was like showing off the side of me that's more idealistic, coming mm -hmm. up with some jokes and realizations. Uh, but the ENFP and the ISTJ are actually, uh, how do I word this? I might have to be a bit intuitive for your audience's sake. They're kind of like mirrored versions of each other. Like mm -hmm. the ENFP embraces the side of the ISTJ that the ISTJ represses and vice versa. So ESTJ or ENFPs are much more creatively driven, much more innovative and in tune mm -hmm. with their feelings. Whereas the ISTJ is much more about familiar experiences. So the ENFP is going to say, eh, I want to move forward a bit more. And the ISTJ is going to say, eh, I want to stick with what's been done. Ah, that, that will forever be a running joke between us, won't it? Just like, I'm an ENFP. <laughs> I do answer the phone usually by saying it's your friendly neighborhood ENFP. That's true. You do. I, I think that the uh, same anonymous source also thought at first that I was, wasn't it an INFP? That yep. it was assumed, yep. but I don't, I think he finally came over to be like, oh yeah, you're an INFJ. Whereas with you, I, did he ever really come over to the no. IST? He had an interview. I, I explained <laughs> step by step how the functions worked. End of the interview, he said, yeah, I still think you're an ENFP. And that exact cadence, too. <laughs> And well, yet, no one in the comments was agreeing with him. They were all like, "No way! You you got to be insane if you think he's an ENFP." I'm I'm in agreement, but let's. I'm gonna I'm gonna humor the side of you that still believes you're an ISTJ and read that description. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see how inaccurate it is. <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna go paragraph by paragraph, and just to let me know what does or does not fit or why things fit. Just expand <laughs> in any way that you want upon whatever I'm saying. Hope so. I don't expand too much that I pop. You'll rip the shirt I bought you for your birthday. That would <laughs> yes, be Yes, audience. I ha I'm wearing the shirt that she made for me for my birthday. Yes. But it's too cold, so we won't show that very much. Yes, my sister also did have a role in that. In fact, that's some of her So artwork. I noticed. So, yes, I'm yes. very, very impressed. <laughs> All right, so the inspector, ISTJ. 
already sounds like me because I, I wanted to be a detective when I grew up. And most of the video games that I play involve some element of gathering the evidence and seeing like how it matches up with the testimony of the people talking. I love Ace Attorney. Mm -hmm. I love uh, Master Detective Archives, Ghost Trick, Phantom Detective, Detective Pikachu, lots of detective games. So you're already off to a great start. <laughs> it's already nailing it. That might just be me, though. I don't know if all ISTJs are detectives. They might think that it's too chaotic or um, out of control, but I really thought it sounded cool. Yeah, they could be very meticulous of the ones that I know. So we shall see how well, how well it continues yeah. to go. Inspecting is the act of looking carefully and thoroughly at the products of an institution, the company's ledger, the farmer's produce, and the manufacturer's merchandise, the family's budget, and INT, ISTJs, I'm already getting the wrong type, ISTJs take on the role with quiet dedication. These inspectors are earnest and attentive in their inspecting. To be certified as right and proper, all must go under their scrutiny, so that no irregularities or discrepancies are let go by. Most often reporting to higher authorities, inspectors tend to work behind the scenes, only rarely confronting others with their findings. Indeed, inspectors make their examinations without flourish or fanfare, and therefore the dedication they bring to their work can go unnoticed and unappreciated. Um, some of that wording is a bit... Uh intuitive -y, so I might need a bit of a simplified breakdown because like looking at a product's mm -hmm. name like do they mean that in a business standpoint or do they mean like we're very observant of if we get a different jar of peanut butter we'll say ah that's off-brand I think pretty much the answer is yes <laughs> I mean that is true that like I can usually tell when I'm eating something off-brand I mean, I do look at the label first, but like I can usually say, oh, that tastes slightly different. So I'm very mm -hmm. good at compartmentalizing familiar experiences, especially when it comes to the five senses and being able to tell the difference. Like even right now, I'm looking at Isabel and I'm able to tell how her hair is different than how it was when I first met her back in August of 2022. I don't know if she wants me to point out those differences. I'll leave that to her discretion. Well, I did straighten it because uh, you already know the plumbing issue in the bathroom at present, so I was not able to wash my hair as expected. So yes, you are correct. It is straightened right now. I mean, if you hadn't washed your hair, I would have been totally okay with that because I do like uh, I do like the brutal honesty, but it's your call, your channel. If you want to be presentable, go for it. <laughs> Well, I, it wasn't washed. That's why I straightened it so it's less obvious. So, If you say so. You can tell with wavy hair. At least I notice more. But I, I mean, I do appreciate the mutual brunette. That is really cool. Yes. Yes. We already did a hair comparison in person, as I recall. I think we did, actually. That was pretty cool. Yeah. We were like, oh, our hair is very similar in color. <laughs> See? Small details. He was already looking at my hair color, comparing it to his. This is what we're talking about right here. So Yeah, I'm very much a comparison-heavy person. I am that mm -hmm. guy that I can tell if a person is taller or shorter, and then I'll be able to say, you got new shoes, didn't you? And nine out of ten times, I'm correct. And mm -hmm. the times that I'm not correct, I think it's probably because science has shown that your height does fluctuate ever so slightly depending on the time of day but it's like yeah. not enough where you would have to readjust your driver's license like you might be five one and a half at this point in the morning and then be five one at another like it's really not much yeah i've i've heard like i don't quote me because i normally like to only quote stuff that i know factually but since we're going on the fly at least Take it with a grain of salt. I've heard that you tend to be slightly taller whenever you first wake up in the morning, and then your like uh, your spine kind of compresses whenever you're standing up throughout the day, so you shrink slightly. So I've heard that. I would believe it because there's this girl that comes into the gym who's about my height, maybe a little bit taller 
but yet I never knew that she was actually as tall as me. I always thought she was shorter. So it must have been that she came in at a different time than usual. Or maybe I was wearing the wrong shoes. Maybe she was wearing different shoes. But I was yeah. just like, oh, this girl's actually about my height, give or take. Yeah, I'm not sure it's usually detectable to the human eye, but like that height difference between morning and evening. But I guess if any type would notice it, it would be the ISTJ. <laughs> yeah, that is true. The ENFPs are typically pretty oblivious of their surroundings. So, and Unless I I'm just a super observant one. All right, so shall I continue the next, um, shall I continue? Unless you think I missed something in that description, because I'm sure I did with all it, that weird wording. It is up to you if you think you, if, if something like stands out to you, that's kind of what I'm interested in hearing. If something just strikes you as I want to explain this, or this is off. Uh, okay, oh boy, um... Okay, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of very intuitive talk in the next one. I am so sorry. I will try to pick around it. I will like leave certain parts out because it does involve reading like the whole book and getting the whole context. So I'm gonna like yeah. boil it down. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Like all the guardians, because the SJ types are called the guardian types. So for anyone mm -hmm. watching who may not know. That's if you're wondering why I'm audience. swatting, there's bugs out here. <laughs> Not trying to swat away her words. That would be very rude of you. Just go leave it <laughs> at the bugs. Uh, let's see. Like all the guardians, they are concrete in communicating. Yeah. And cooperative in implementing goals. They are... Uh, Not so much. I just don't know what they mean by implementing goals. Um... It means that whenever you're working towards something, they try to they try to cooperate with other people as opposed to just pushing their will on others. Yeah, I would say that's pretty accurate. Um, like even when I was uh, chaperoning on mission trips and conferences, I would usually prefer to stupid bugs. Uh, I would usually prefer to relay the existing rules that was already established by the conference as opposed to making up my own. Mm -hmm. In fact, if the teenagers had a better suggestion than me, I'd say, okay, that sounds good. Might as well. It's not against the rules, so go for it. That sounds pretty accurate to you then. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm usually that type that um, as I was walking out of work today, I saw a moving company that was trying to get some furniture into a building. And I said, hey, would you guys like some help? Mm -hmm. it oft they eventually ended up saying no. But like, uh, I believe ISTJs are the type that they like to call themselves the enthusiastic servant, mm -hmm. where we just we want to help people. It's just for us, it's more so about tangible realities as opposed to the more touchy-feely emotional stuff that the ISFJs would. Not saying I can't do that, but I'm going to want to, like, implement some kind of practical, like, do something about it type mm -hmm. of method as opposed to, ah, oh, there, there, you're going to be fine. Yeah. I've definitely noticed that in our conversations. You're more solution-oriented than simply staying as the listening ear or the empathy. I mean, I try to be, but if I'm being honest with myself, it's hard. <laughs> no. I very much want to, like, rip the nail out of the forehead if you've seen that uh, comic strip. I have not, but I know enough just based upon context to know what that means. Well, it's te it was technically written as a satire of the difference between men and women, but I think it applies in Myers-Briggs between the thinking and the feeling types because most men are thinking types and most women are feeling types. So I think it, it goes well enough. Well, I guess I should continue. Otherwise, we'll talk about ripping nails <laughs> out of our heads the rest of the time. So for anyone watching who may be wondering how come we're getting on so many tangents, like this is how we talk. It's just like, <laughs> however we want to talk, we will just say anything we want. So <laughs> I mean, normal. my type has a side to us that likes to jump to random ideas. 
which is probably also why uh, I get ENFP. But when it comes to the workforce, we're actually very focused and Mm -hmm. very uh, driven toward doing the job according to protocol. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty hard for us to get distracted. And if we are, we usually have a mental clock of like, okay, break time's over, time to get back to it. Well, I think break time is over. We should get back to reading because I <laughs> I just know like we we talk we we could talk a long time about basically nothing. Whenever we're actually talking about something, I'm like, okay, we have to keep this on track. Or we will get nowhere. Well this will be like three hours. I know <laughs> us. All right. Let us continue. Like all the, oh, I already read that. Um, They are interested in learning about commerce, are preoccupied with morality, and work well with material. And the look on your face is is saying something to me. What what is it? Uh, I don't know what commerce is. Commerce? Um, Maybe I should look up a technical definition, but from my understanding of commerce is just like um, buying and trading in kind of the business world. Yeah, no, that's not me at all. I'm pretty terrible at that kind of stuff. Yeah. I actually, I think I'm the opposite of a businessman. I'm that type of person that I like to take easy jobs that are step by step, no guesswork involved, that I can just follow my checklist and not have to do any kind of innovative figuring it out on the fly. Not very good at taking a brand new situation and finding some way to creatively solve the problem. Like today we had a power outage at my workplace and my first instinct was I got to call my boss and ask what to do. Yeah, that's where definitely where you and I differ is like, I like, uh, I do like scheduled and have like having some idea what's going on. However, I tend to, I tend to like embracing things that are new and I tend to like learning new things so much. So uh, that's definitely where you and I are differing in that respect. Interesting. Yeah. Well, she's eventually going to get a typing session done. So it could mean that we're actually more similar than you think. You really want me to be an INFP, don't you? Not really, no. <laughs> Um, my experience with INFPs has been mostly negative, so I'm hoping that you're not for the sake of my sanity. <laughs> well, thank you that you don't... But if you are, then you'll be a trendsetter. I thought I was already a trendsetter as an INFJ, so... And you can be a trendsetter as an INFP as well. <laughs> I... T- I still think that I am an INFJ. I do know that my persona online can look a little INFP, which I think is where so many people think that I am that type. But I I mean, your editing style does have that kind of um, more bouncy and creative feel that INFPs are known for. And also, like, sometimes you make comparisons, like, for example, Mm -hmm. when you said that's a lot of change in one of your videos, you showed pennies raining down. INFJs would be a lot more abstract than that, but also it's not fair to judge someone's type off of how they edit their videos because the nature of a YouTube video means that you're going to have to change some elements of yourself to make it presentable. Like, if Mm -hmm. I just spoke in a monotone, boring voice all the time, my videos, well... my videos would probably be flops. Yeah, that's the thing is I I know uh, I'm going off of a lot of channels and took inspiration from a lot of channels that I know are very well liked. And so I'm trying to interject that feeling into my channel because of I know people tend to like it whenever it looks a certain way aesthetically and a certain way creatively. So. I do enjoy being creative and I do have, I've learned to enjoy the process of editing just for what it is because I really do like having that skill. However, it started out more as a way of pleasing other people and being like, what do the viewers want? I want to give that to them. 
and the creativity was simply a means to an end for achieving what it is that the viewers might want to see from me. So it was mm. more driven by people's feelings and possibly their desires for viewing material as opposed to just me being creative. It's kind of gotten to that point of like, I just enjoy it, but yeah, it started out very much just about other people and their feelings, not my own. Well, so. that's a bit of a nuanced discussion that uh, is going to take a while for me to explain. <laughs> so I think we should probably just move on. Yeah, we, we should. This is about you, not me. All <laughs> right, let's see. Um, they tend to be fatalistic, pessimistic, and stoical as they guard the gateways and look to yesterday. Um, uh, can, can you care to people translate that a bit? Fatalistic is just what happens is what happens. They don't get very philosophical about it. It just is what it is. Uh, yeah, to an extent. I don't think I'm perfectly capable of seeing things as they are because I already mentioned I'm a very comparison-heavy person. Mm -hmm. I, I notice differences in from the past to the present very easily. But I would say that I don't typically like to look deeper into things unless if it's comparing it to something in the past. Like I might say, oh, that reminds me of a scene in a video game I like. But I'm not going to try to look into something that's more on the speculation, more uh, philosophical stuff like a what if or a what if this gives us the answer to mankind like yeah no that's giving me a headache just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> um stoic i don't think i'm as stoic as most istjs but i know like my typical manner of speaking is usually kind of it can be a bit plain mm -hmm. I, I know that when i'm excited about something that definitely shows but even like if you compare me to actual ENFPs, my excitement is relatively muted in comparison to them where they're like much more exuberant than I am. Okay. Like yeah, I actually did a video on my channel where I showed my reaction to when Banjo and Kazooie got into Super Smash Brothers Ultimate because Banjo and Kazooie was like my uh I know intuitives would say dream. I'll just go with it. <laughs> Most of you watching are intuitives. That was like my dream come true. Uh, I was like so excited. I was like running through the house, screaming and jumping in joy. But then in that video, I also showed how I usually respond to things, which is, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. If you actually go on Miss Peggle's YouTube channel, you'll see a reaction that she and I just did. And like she's like, oh, my gosh, this is cool. And I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty great. So, like, uh, my emotional expression is much more in here than it is out there. I could believe it. Although I have seen you more emotional, like, whenever we met. So, I've seen a little bit of that, the more emotional <laughs> side, but not all the time. And definitely not whenever we first met. It, it took you a while to kind of warm up. Uh, I mean, I'll take your word for it. I feel like I was already warmed up by the fact that I was, like, spinning you around. Insert clip of that vlog <laughs> into here, because I'm pretty sure you're going to be editing parts of this. Oh, whenever I said uh, we first met, I meant, like, back in 2020, whenever we met online. Oh, and we were first starting to oh talk. I see. Yeah, yeah uh, I think that was because I'm like that with everyone. So yeah. it's not really a you thing, not really an INFJ thing. It was just I wanted to make sure I knew what I was getting into because mm -hmm. a person's persona can be very different from their um, what oh, they yeah. present on YouTube. Like I'm sure my persona is not exactly how I present it on YouTube, although I try to pretend mm -hmm. it is because I have a series of videos called Just Paulism, which is what it says on the side of the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> where I try to be as authentic as possible. So hopefully if you like this enough, you'll see a lot more of it on my YouTube channel. Is fatalistic the only one that was not making sense to you? Uh, you said one more adjective. Um, it was... Uh, pessimistic, 
stoical. Oh, yeah, yeah, pessimistic. Um, actually, I think I'm pretty optimistic, but I would say I'm pessimistic when it comes to the future and speculation. I am that type of person that I usually don't see any way that what's about to come is going to have any kind of redemption unless if we really work hard at making it happen. Like I'm very mm. worried about um, the kids right now. Like I'm very worried that they will end up having their brains filled with a whole bunch of garbage and they'll be much more postmodernistic and all that politically politically incorrect stuff that you don't want on this channel. <laughs> Uh, and then there's also, I'm also afraid that like game prices will just keep getting worse because the cost mm -hmm. of everything is going up and that the cost of living will increase. And as we get oh, older, yeah. we develop more bodily problems. I think I'm on a pretty good track as far as my health goes, because I see my doctor regularly and if I ever get uh, into a better financial situation, I do plan on hiring a personal trainer to make sure that I can maintain an adequate weight going into forties and beyond. Cause that's when your metabolism changes, but overall, yeah, not too hopeful for our future. Yeah. To be fair, a lot of the things that you mentioned are things I'm like, uh, about to, so I can't blame you there. <laughs> Let's see. What about, what about a uh, stoical? You're familiar. I with think I already mentioned that earlier, where I said that sometimes I can be a bit um, okay, yeah, bland in my delivery of my lines. Okay, then I guess you have that pretty much covered. Let's see. I haven't been, I haven't mm -hmm. been telling you the whys of everything though. Um, I, I hopefully my in-depth explanations of my personal experience will like fill that void, as the intuitives would say. Mm. I mean, I'm around mostly intuitive types in my life, so I'm starting <laughs> to learn how to speak your language. Yes, we've infiltrated <laughs> him. Oh, it's mission accomplished. Well, you still have a ways to go. You're not an ENFP yet. <laughs> We're working on you, though. Okay. We will flip your function stack. Anyway, uh, let's see. They base their self-image on being dependable. Bene beneficent, I think I'm saying that right, and respectable. Often concerned about things, they trust authority, yearn for belonging, seek security, prize gratitude, and aspire to executive position. Uh, definitely not the expired <laughs> executive position aspire to executive position um i'm perfectly content with being the servant i don't think i'd make a very good boss in the slightest um let me think how the heck did they word that uh i do i think deep down inside i do like gratitude mm -hmm. i don't always word it like i'm constantly seeking it because that'll make me sound like i'm boastful because i like to be humble but I do, I do admit that one of my biggest flaws is that I tend to not give myself enough credit for my triumphs. I'm usually the type yeah. of person where I downplay my accomplishments a lot because I think, oh, it's no big deal. Like even mm. like big milestones on YouTube, like one of my videos has over 15,000 views. And mm -hmm. yet usually my response to everyone that says it's good is you think this trash is worthy of watching. No, no, Paul, don't do that to yourself. You know, you, some of your viewers are going to be watching this too, and they're going to be shouting you down in the comments section just hearing you say that. <laughs> well, I guess, like, for that particular video, I, I guess I'm a bit embarrassed that that video is so viral, but yet videos mm. that I, like, spent like maybe over a year in the planning stages and like went into three o'clock in the morning editing, like those videos get like maybe yeah. a couple hundred views. And it's like, why not say all that praise to those videos where I'm actually pouring love and dedication. That one video, I just plopped open the camera and just started rolling. Like anyone can do that. <laughs> My mom can do that. She hardly knows how to work a computer. So why compliment someone for amateurish results when you can compliment someone for actually achieving something that actually takes skill and effort 
Yes, okay. I'm going to rant with you there because that's that's happened to me where I put so much effort into a video and then it gets barely any notice and then I just kind of slap one together and it gets so much attention and I'm like, why? The internet and meme culture, <sighs> I think, is the honest answer. I mean, the last video that I did, I, I was very busy working on your projects as well as some other projects and I and I just had to slap that video together about reacting to, and I've been wanting to react to that one clip, and it got, I think it's up to like 550 views, and it's been a little over a week, which is insanely high. Normally it's like one or 200 by this time. And I'm like, that, that was like the shortest video I've done on record. And well. that got so many views. If I had to take a guess as to why it's popular, it's when you're talking about mind control and your channel is all about psychological facts, not psychological conspiracy, people are like, okay, I want to know how to mind control the people in my life. That's <laughs> really cool. I'm a little worried about what I've pandered to whenever you put it that way. What have I done? What have I released upon the world? But I do actually, like, actually that was a concern I had getting into psychology. I'm like, I'm teaching people some manipulation tactics. <laughs> but then I have to consider that those do exist and manipulators already know about them, even on an intuitive level. And the people who don't know about them need to know about them. That's why I don't so. want to go into business because most of business involves a lot of manipulation tactics not being honest not having integrity with your product like if you really think your product is good you should be able to say with confidence this is what my product is if you have to lie about it and withhold the nastier elements mm -hmm. i mean that's how you market but that's also like very inauthentic and dishonest well i guess i do and don't agree with that statement I definitely see that there's a lot of businesses that do that and a lot of executives and salesmen who do that. That definitely exists and unfortunately it is rampant. But as far as business just being business, it doesn't have to be that way. It puts you ahead in some ways, but it doesn't, you don't have to play it that way. You just won't get well, ahead as fast. Because I'm mean, into you don't business. But I, mean, I don't if you do watched, it that way. Well, if you watched the latest Nintendo Direct, you didn't hear Nintendo saying, hey, by the way, you." For, let, let me give you the exact example I'm referring to, so I'm okay. not being vague. They announced a game called F-099, which is mm -hmm. like an old game from the 90s that they made like so that 99 people at once can play it, because it was originally only one player. And it said you need a, an online subscription service in order to do it. Now, if they were being honest, they would say, hey, you need to pay $20 a year for a service that can barely run online games. But they didn't. They didn't say mm -hmm. that. They said it's free for people that have this service. That's why I think marketing is dishonest because it yeah. glosses over the messier elements. It doesn't tell the truth about the product. It expects you to say, ooh. F-Zero. It's the first new F-Zero game in 20 years. I'm going to get it. Who cares if your online is terrible? I'm just going to get it. And then they find out the hard way, realize Nintendo doesn't offer refunds, and they get scammed. That's why I don't like advertising. That's why I don't... Well, I don't hate people, because my religion doesn't allow me to do that, but I hate the tactics they use. Yeah, again, for me, it's, it's not that I'm blaming business. I'm blaming dishonest business for practices like that like i i don't mind doing advertising and using advertising on like my social media to get out about my channel but then there this this person shall remain anonymous but i know someone who is also a youtuber who goes to uh services that allow you to pay people to watch and pay people to leave good comments and to like. Mm. And I'm like, I am all for, like, I don't mind paying for ads to run online, but they, the people who pick that video and decide to watch it, 
it always has to be authentic for me. It cannot be someone who's being paid to watch it and leave a comment. Every comment on my channel not been paid for. And I also try not to prompt people and like push people. I want everything to be authentic. So I don't mind like just advertising in terms of running ads, but I do have a problem whenever it gets into dishonest practices, like paying people to leave comments and like and view because it's not really what the video is earning. It's not earning honest clicks. So yeah. that is kind of the difference between my advertising strategy, which is just, I will pay to run ads, but I will not pay to have people leave false reviews. Essentially, good comments on a video are basically false reviews if they're being paid to leave them. So that is the difference between like ethical practice, which is what I always try my hardest to stay on versus unethical. So th that's where there's a difference. Like there is an ethical way to run business and an unethical way. INFJs and ethics, that's not something I never thought I'd hear together. That is pretty interesting. See, that's ironic. That flies in the face of everything that I know about INFJs who are very moral based. That's what I've always known about the type. I mean, they can be, but that's another function stack discussion. <laughs> Speaking of, we should get back to the actual. <laughs> Well, I figure this is giving your audience context as it to is. why it is. I believe what I believe. That it's not just, oh, because I'm this type. It, like, actually ties into my life and my decisions and research mm -hmm. and objective truth. It's and not the bug a in my thing. eyebrow. It's not a bad thing, but I know we're, we could stay on this topic an hour and pick <laughs> it apart. I'm like, yeah, my computer won't last forever. People's attention spans will not last forever. That's right. why I have a battery saver. <laughs> and I charged my phone before we talked, so just in case you wanted to talk longer, I got juice for it. <laughs> Good deal. Let's see. Uh, no, no. Intellectually, they are prone to practice logistics far more than tactics, diplomacy, and especially strategy. Yep. <laughs> um, I uh, have been told that I'm pretty intellectually challenged so i'm not too good at games like chess or uh like uh battle simulators which i know like a lot of intjs and entps are good at because they have very high intuition i don't that's not to say i don't play any strategy games like i do play fire emblem but that's because they have what's called the combat forecast window when you, where you're about to initiate a battle it'll say you have this much percentage of hitting you're going to do this much damage this is your percentage of critical rate this is how much health the enemy will have afterwards so it's mm -hmm. very direct you're you're not doing any guesswork there the only guesswork you're doing is percentages which yeah percentages are pretty basic calculations whereas something like trying to think five moves in advance like what my brother does no no, not really, no. <laughs> I could definitely see you having logistics as your strongest, since you you always like to have everything cut, dried, and calculated. Yep, especially when, when I was going to visit you, I wanted to know, admittedly I didn't learn all of the answers, but I wanted to know, like, okay, the length of the trip, give or take what the hotel is going to be like, what is going to be a rough agenda, how long is the trip going to be. Mm -hmm. So I did want to know all of that. I didn't just want to say, oh, hey, I'm just going to blindly take a trip to where you live. Like I wanted to fine tune the details so that I wasn't like mm -hmm. shocked or caught off guard by a whole lot of stuff. And the times that I was caught off guard, she noticed. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, oh, Paul, I'll try to like accommodate for you so that you're not totally uncomfortable. <laughs> See, I, I actually do agree with you even as an INFJ. I kind of like to know, have a, have a little bit of structure and a little bit of like, knowing things ahead of time like i'm going to be taking my first plane trip in less than two weeks now to california for the feast of tabernacles and i'm like okay i want as many details ahead of time as i can get but part of that is just i know that my extroverted sensing 
It's so freaking bad. And I d- you used a function talk, so the red light of it, but that <laughs> new function is going off. Extroverted sensing is, do you want to explain just that one since I referenced uh, it? I can try. Um, so <laughs> the, the, the Myers-Briggs types that use extroverted sensing tend to pay more attention to their surroundings and what is happening in the present moment as opposed to the types that use what's called introverted sensing, where they pay more attention to the past and what has happened. Mm -hmm. So um, her type having very low extroverted sensing is going to have a hard time being aware of the present moment, instead being very future driven and oftentimes like (laughs) being startled by whatever's right in front of their face. (laughs) Wait a minute. Did I actually ever look like that whenever we were in person? Did I startle like that? Are you imitating me? Um, I, I was imitating more of like what INTJs do because they're a, a piece of work. <laughs> <laughs> INFJs have their moments. They're just more graceful about it because they're feeling types. So they're a bit more concerned about how their, how their startledness is going to reflect on others whereas INTJs they're just going to express their feelings no matter what people think I absolutely do startle that way sometimes so I was like did I do that around you <laughs> is is that me <laughs> <laughs> no well to be to be clear we didn't really give you a whole bunch of opportunities to be startled except for the time when I tried to put my hand in front of your eye when you mentioned that little weakness of yours and you, like, slapped my hand out of the way like it was a bumblebee. It may as well have been. <laughs> and he tried to kill me, by the way. Yes, I did. Maliciously, yes. might I add. Yes. He, he, he went under a waterfall, and he purposely held my tube in the lazy river under that waterfall. I'm like, the water falling on my head. What's going on? How come I'm not passed out by now? I should be gone from the waterfall by now. No, he was holding my tube in place. He tried. I guess you to could say me. I'm holding you back from your potential. I'm gonna keep reading. Like this, <laughs> I'm gonna keep reading. <clears throat> there are a great many inspectors. They make up perhaps as much as ten percent of the general population. Garrett, they are characterized by decisiveness in practical affairs. Are the guardians of institutions, and if only one adjective could be selected, super dependable, a term used by Myers, would best describe them. Whether at work or at home, ISTJs are nothing if not reliable, particularly when it comes to inspecting the people and things in their jurisdiction. Quietly seeing to it that uniform quality of product is maintained and that those around them uphold certain standards of attitude and conduct. Hmm. So far, assuming I'm understanding you correctly, I'm just moving to a better light source because the kitchen light is now on, so I don't feel like I'm shrouded in so much darkness. Oh, like you're Uh, I would say (laughs) most of it seems to fit. I think think I'm a pretty reliable person. Like, if I promise Mm -hmm. something, I get it done. Like, if I don't get something done that I promised, it's usually because some really extreme unknown happened that I couldn't have predicted. Like, maybe, Mm -hmm. like today, we had a power outage. So, can you blame me for not getting certain things done at my job? Because it would have been too dangerous. Like, I'm a Mm -hmm. janitor. So, if I were to mop the floor, that would be too hard to spot where I was mopping. That could be a potential liability issue. So, I therefore asked one of my coworkers to mop the floor after I left because by the time I left the power came back on I was like yeah I normally would have mopped the floor but due to this unforeseen circumstance I had to do something different I can definitely vouch that he is very reliable well thank you I never knew you thought that about me yeah yeah you're like always on the dot whenever we do phone calls and yeah you're very on the dot with a oh, lot wow. and anytime you like oh anytime you say you're gonna do something you do it and you're very meticulous so yes and the and light just the, went off yeah that's what i was looking at i'm like your face is darkening yeah oh well 
Like your I'm not soul. too bi- I'm not too thrilled with um how I look when I'm filmed in the darkness because it makes me look like a hobo, but oh well, I'll put up with it. <laughs> I mean, I feel like people would not have thought that, but now that you've said it, you're going to have so many comments being like, he does kind of look like a hobo. Look at him. You're, you're, you invited name calling. I guess I did, yeah. I'm sorry. You, I don't think you do, but you know there's someone who's going to make a crack comment now. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> I don't have to read all of them, I guess. Shall I move on? Are you done expanding upon it, or um, if you think I've expanded on it enough, I, I mean, mean, I don't know how much your audience knows about my type. Well, I guess that's kind of what we're doing here is just making sure that they do know your type. But, I suppose. I mean, basically, whatever you want them to know, go ahead and say it. So um, you let me know whenever you're done. Okay. Well, I guess we can continue for now, and if there's nothing else, I can mention a few things and okay. if we have extra time maybe you can even read the ENFP description and see if that fits me I already know it's not going to spoiler alert <laughs> we could try we could try could be a good laugh <laughs> all right well these hard-nosed and silent guardians have a distaste for and distrust of fanciness in speech dress and place their words tend to be simple and down home not showy or high-flown. Their clothes are often homespun and conservative rather than the latest fashion. And their home and work environments are usually neat, orderly, plain, rather than up-to-date or luxurious. Were you going to say something? Um, assuming I'm understanding all that correctly, the only thing I don't agree with there is uh, that my house is very clean. My room is has been called a hurricane by people that have seen it. But it's organized to me because I know where everything is. And if mm-hmm. it were to be anywhere else, I would uh, freak out because I'd be like, no, that's supposed to be to the left of my computer. Why is it to the right? Because now I'm not going to know where it is. So everything has its place. Everything is very meticulously set. Even if by objective feng shui standards, it's not. I guess um, it's, yeah. Again, I think I understood you correctly. We're very simplistic people in our talk. We don't use a lot of mm-hmm. metaphors. And when we do, it's usually for the butt of a joke. Um, mm-hmm. I do tend to mostly wear T-shirts that have to do with my interests. But I want them to be functional and get the job done over uh, being presentable. So a lot of mm-hmm. times I will wear what's the most comfortable and practical even if it's totally inappropriate for the situation i've gotten better at it but when i was a kid i would be that guy that when it was time to go to church i'd be dressed in sweatshirts and a and a t-shirt and my mom would be what do you think you're doing there and i'd be like dressing for the weather and she's like no no you're supposed to dress respectful for church i like, <laughs> mean i gotta wear all that stuffy stuff give me a break i picture you as someone who likes to skip out on ties whenever you dress yeah. up yeah, because they they can choke you too easily. Men have larger Adam's apples than women, so there's that aspect of it. I also just don't see the point. Like, why wear a tie? What's the practical usage of it besides possibly strangling someone that you um, want to uh, scare information out of? Not that I would condone that. That was just that was the first thing that came into my mind of what could a tie actually be used for? Why do men wear it? There's literally no purpose. At least with the tuxedo, it's got like pockets on the inside where they could put more stuff. Pants, dress pants. They have, you know, the belt clips where they could put their keychains. They got the pockets. They got the back pockets. Not the most practical thing because most men like sit on their wallets and then the wallets fall in the toilet. So not the <laughs> ideal. <laughs> I'm I'm such a visual person. I'm visualizing everything that you're talking about. And I'm like, man, he he's dropping wallets and toilets and strangling I've people. I've never with done ties. that because I'm I'm very aware of my surroundings. So I'm usually not the clumsy type at all. Very much the type that is telling other people that they're being clumsy. I feel like I mean, I feel like you would just go up to someone randomly and be like, 
I don't like ties. You could strangle on them, and then people will be like, I'm not wearing ties anymore. I never thought about that. Just start the like only this times tie I've, ban. The only times I've ever worn ties are when I was forced to by my mother. I feel like there's a lot there to unpack, but we should probably, we're, we're going to get on too many <laughs> tangents if we unpack the, the trauma that your mother inflicted via ties upon your life. Oh, just wait until she watches this. <laughs> All the more reason to uh, unpack that in the privacy of a phone call between us. I suppose. All right. Let's see. Now that we have established that for the most part that is true, in their choice of personal property, cars, furnishings, jewelry, and so on, price and durability are the main concern. Comfort or appearance given small consideration. Yep. It's got to be cheap and it's got to be effective. If it's the latest thing, but it's going to break easy or it costs too much money, why bother? But you did say comfort is a little bit to you. Um, so, well, the right? thing about me is that I get comfort from familiarity. Uh -huh. So if I was put into a position where I was uncomfortable for a good reason, then mm -hmm. I would like to be back in that because it's dopamine from the familiarity. Mm. Like when I was on the mission trip, most of the mission trips I went on, I had to sleep on the floor. Now they would always say at the prep meetings, like make sure you guys bring an air mattress cause you're gonna be uncomfortable. And I'd be like, yeah, no, I'm bringing a sleeping bag and two pillows and that's it. Because I was dead set determined that I wanted to have the authentic on the floor experience, especially because that was before my miraculous healing. So I had a really bad back. And I figured if I did that, then it would be better on the back because they say that when a surface is harder, that's like better on the spine. Oh, yeah, it and is. Wouldn't you know it? Wouldn't you know it? Three days after I slept on the floor on my previous mission trip. I got a miraculous healing on my back and I filmed it on the camera and everything. I said, the floor is good for people with bad backs. Little did I know what would happen afterwards. My back is not the best thanks to mild scoliosis and it does help to lie down on a hard, flat surface. Very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so comfort, I, see this is why I like doing this. You expanded upon ISTJs and how they derive comfort. Because most people, upon reading that, would be like, oh yeah, they just, they want to feel physically comfortable. And you're like, no, we like comfort from familiarity. <laughs> well, I do like feeling comfort from physicality. Like, if I sit on a good couch, I'm going to be, like, immensely enjoying myself. But I'm going to be immensely enjoying myself more if it's something familiar. Yeah. You have expanded upon the meaning. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. You <laughs> I wasn't even trying to, but I, I guess I did. Well, that's... That's what this is for. It is expanding yeah, so. our knowledge. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, let us continue expanding. Not out of your shirt, though. Uh, <sighs> classics, antiques, and heirlooms are especially valued, having achieved, having achieved a certain time-honored status. Inspectors prefer the old-fashioned to the newfangled every time. Even on vacation, ISTJs are no-nonsense types who tend to be, who tend to not be attracted by exotic foods, beverages, or locales. <laughs> the, I feel like that last paragraph is going to make you be like, how could anyone think he's an ENFP? He was so stubborn. He refused to eat anything other than McDonald's or Burger King. Yes, guys, I can vouch for it. He's like... I told him about the Thai food, and he's like, that sounds disgusting. Yeah, definitely. And, and all I had was water when I was there, because I didn't want to be rude to the waitress. <laughs> but, yeah, I was just like, yeah, no, I'm not taking that risk. Besides, well, think about it. Think about it logically. Let's say that I had taken that risk, and the food turned out to be terrible. What is the proper thing to do? Throw it out. Because if I had given it to you and Teresa, that would have spread germs, not the ideal solution. So the most logical course of action was to not order new food so that I wouldn't have to waste it if I didn't like it. We did offer But to that's let not you. what I was thinking at the time. <laughs> at the time, I was thinking, this is uncomfortable. But 
We did offer to let you try some of our food, which wouldn't have wasted but maybe a spoonful. Eh. You know I'm going to no. challenge you from here. Like, yeah, I'm going to challenge you at points just to get info out of you, so just be prepared. But we, eh. that wouldn't have wasted food, except for maybe like a little bit. That's, you eh. know... Well, the thing about me, I explained this in another video, but... I get a dopamine rush from world records. So, like, I love, for example, the Guinness World Book of Records because it has, like, a lot of categories for most amount of time doing this. So, like, I, for example, I'm trying to be the world's longest running YouTuber. So that's why it's important to me to have a steady flow of videos so that I can break that record, so that I can have that familiarity, so that I can say, guess what, guys? I was on YouTube longer than anyone else. I got that record. I was able to be familiar. I'll be the last one standing by the time YouTube is shut down. Like, I want that dopamine from the familiarity. Uh, there was also a there was also the stanza I had where I went to every single meeting at my youth group when I was a teenager. I mm -hmm. wanted that dopamine of I was able to have that familiarity for so long and I had the record. I guess to a certain extent, I do have some kind of desire for dominance, but it's not the same as like the the more extroverted types. Mine is more so dominance in terms of the whole world as opposed to my immediate opponents. Like, I want to be the best at whatever it is that I'm good at. But if it's something I'm not good at, then I'm totally okay with saying, eh, not even worth trying. So, yeah, that, that part about executive position is somewhat true in kind of an interesting sense, I guess. Um, well, I guess if you consider hobbies executive then yeah but if my That's boss true. were to say hey paul you want to take over as manager i'd be like no thanks <laughs> give me a promotion where i just work longer at my current job but don't like don't promote me to anything else than what i'm already doing i have asked her if i could do office work a few times but she said like no i don't think that's within your skill set and after reflecting on it i'm like yeah she's right i'm pretty bad at office jobs yeah. i can just barely do the job for her as as it is so i'm surprised she hasn't fired me by now oh don't don't say that i right, we're we're not gonna go down that very sad rabbit hole at the moment we're, we're gonna keep moving and keep discovering <laughs> if you were anyone else sad. i would have said you were joking but i actually think you're being serious and that's kind of hilarious what? That it's, it, you're like, oh, I can't believe I'm not fired by now. Like, that's sad. Don't say well, that about your work. Well, just because I know you have a certain standard, and I don't always meet it. So I want to make sure that I'm, like, being the best. Yeah, that's true. But um, don't downplay yourself, Paul. All right. That if, makes if, me if you sad. Say, if you say so. She sense. hardly ever calls me by my name, so you know I hit her. <laughs> Yes, you did. All right, let us keep discovering what's going on in your head. Go um. Ahead. Well, what's going on in my head is there's what's called a brain, and there's a bunch of, like, wires and blood flowing through the brain, and, you know, there's also a lot of neurons as well, and those neurons mm -hmm. are what govern every other part of the body being able to function as well or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he does this to me all the time, guys. He goes to the literal whenever I've used a metaphorical statement. And he... There's there's a part of my soul that like like screams and starts cringing whenever he does this. It's now you just so... gotta make a horror crux out of it. No, oh, okay. While not outgoing like the ESTJs. ISTJs are likely to be involved in community service organizations that continue traditional values to the young, such as Sunday School, Little League, or Boy and Girl Scouts, in preserving the national heritage. Along with all the guardians, the inspectors find value in ceremonies and rituals, weddings, birthdays, and anniversaries, for example, 
although they tend to be shy if the occasion becomes too large or too public. Uh. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm just thinking out loud. Okay. <laughs> if you're sure. At work, they are apt to see the company picnic or holiday office party as a necessary nuisance, but they are likely to enjoy these events once they arrive and loosen up a bit. More to the male inspector's liking is the men's only party. Ugh. The, <laughs> where he can drop his guard and use a bit of off-color language. Now that I know is not you. Yeah, In no, I hate <laughs> gender segregation. I am all for co-ed at every opportunity except in the bathroom and locker room. <laughs> I do agree that there needs to be some segregation in those areas. On point. Um, but does anything else not Most of it sounded paragraph? like me. Like, most of it sounded like me. Uh, I think, I, I actually really hate, like, weddings, anniversaries, and graduations, um, if I ever get married, I'm hoping I can convince my hypothetical wife, like, okay, you just put on a fake wedding with some other friends, have them, like, pretend to me marrying you, get one of your guy friends to, like, stand into me, I'm just going to take a nap, we'll just look up the church's guidelines for the least cumbersome wedding, least amount of people possible, and then just get away from everyone. And besides, that way it doesn't show favoritism either. So, like, if I can't afford to have my absolute best friends come, then I'll say, none of you were invited anyway, so therefore I showed favoritism to all of you. I think what you're looking for is an elopement. Or maybe just going to uh, the courthouse. If the Catholic Church allows it, yeah. But if it doesn't, then I would just want the quietest, most low-key mass ever with no reception. Probably not very much music, unless if it was like nostalgic music. And, you know, make sure the microphones are turned down. Like, I really don't like things being a big fuss. Except by YouTube videos, because you can adjust the volume for those. But when you're, like, live celebrating something, you can't. Unless you, like, wear earphones. As far as work parties, uh, my job doesn't really do that because I'm a janitor. But my, my boss does often give me holidays off, mm -hmm. and I really appreciate her for that. Although usually I ask for, like, another day to make up for it because I'm like, I don't want to lose money on that. I usually only yeah. take days off on very rare occasions or if, like, I'm sick. Mm -hmm. But even then, sometimes I have to argue with my boss as to what constitutes sick enough to not work because there have been times where they're like you really should be going home like there was one time at my previous job mm -hmm. where I actually was throwing up and I said oh mm -hmm. once it passes I'll just get back to work they're like you should probably rest and I'm like no I gotta get the job done and they're like no 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 work ethic demands that if you're that sick you go rest and I'm like oh if I have to but let my boss know that I tried my best and I tried to get back to work they're like yes yes your boss knows that you're a hard worker yeah once you are barfing at your job that's usually a pretty pretty good standard of you should be home resting yeah well I, I barfed at the toilet so it's not like I barfed at my job <laughs> But, like, I came back from the toilet and said that I was throwing up. So, but th they if, had to know why I was gone. You could run the risk of, like, what if something happens and then you do throw up on the job? Like, that can happen if you're throwing up. And besides, you might get other people sick. So, I can kind of yeah. see the, the merit in, in that. Like, it's definitely a standard where I'm, like, I'm sorry, I'm agreeing with well, your boss here. Well, back then I was more about duty than about um, protocol. <laughs> I was like, I got to get the job done. And I I wasn't good at seeing the nuances. I wasn't good at seeing like between the lines or anything like that. For me, it was you get the job done even if the world is crumbling around you. That was my logic back then. Now I'm a bit more flexible, but I still very much am work-oriented with very minimal breaks in like saying hi to people and all that gotcha that i'll admit that that sounds classic istj where it's like well I it's not do my totally duty. like that it's not totally like that because sometimes i will walk away from my job to say hi to one of the regulars and say like did you see the latest nintendo direct but it's typically like no less than two minutes and then i get right back to work 
Well, whenever I said that, I was referring to the fact that you were very much prioritizing your duty on the job. So mm, yeah. that that's very ISTJ from what I know of them. We'll have to see if the ENFP fits that. Oh boy. <laughs> All right. Shall I shall I continue with this opposite type of yours? Unless you want to jump into ENFP, sure, <laughs> go for it. Let's do this first, since this is what the main video is about. Uh, let's see. Uh, as administrators, they are patient with their work and with procedures within an institution, although not always patient with the individual goals and unauthorized behavior of some people in that institution. Yep. <laughs> I feel like that was a mic drop for you. What's that mean? If you have a mic drop moment, like say you've said that your piece and then you just drop the mic, it means like a confirmation of this is the truth kind of a moment. Yeah. A very strong statement, in other words. I actually forgot the wording because it was so abstract, but I think it was something to do with like, could you read that part again? Because I kind of, yeah. the wording was a bit off. Um, as administrators, they are patient with their work and with procedures within an institution, although they are not always patient with the individual goals and unauthorized behavior of some people in that institution. Yep. So as a janitor, obviously my job is to keep everything clean mm -hmm. and according to the standards of my boss. So mm -hmm. that means that even if I personally disagree with her cleaning methods, that's none of my business. I just do it. Like, I don't particularly mm -hmm. think that her way of cleaning the toilets is the most logical, but that's how she tells me to do it, so I'm going to do it. I get very impatient when I see customers, like, breaking the rules that she's established. Like, if I'm cleaning a treadmill and there's dirt on there when she clearly says, clean shoes before you work out, I'm going to be like, how dare they disrespect my boss? I'm going to be even more mad at that than me saying, how dare I have to clean this up? I'm going to be mad for her sake more than for mine. Gotcha. That makes sense. I know that... So, what were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say that there are days when I just am so fed up with the customers, either because they're being too loud or because they're disrespecting the rules, that I have to hold myself in from like making some kind of sarcastic quip, like, oh, yay, glad you're finally done working out. But, like, in my head, I'm going wild. Like, sometimes I'll be like, <laughs> oh, good, the smelly guy is out of the gym. Thank goodness. Now I can actually work without my nose clogging. Hopefully the smelly guy does not see this and put the dots together. Be like, so that's Well, I don't actually know of thinking. anyone that's smelly there. That was just a hypothetical example but there are guys that are like you know really loud there are guys that like hiss when they work out and so i give them names like this guy is the snake because he always hisses when he works out this guy is the runner because he always walks around the gym so i have like nicknames for everyone Our... and like sometimes when i go home i'll say like well this is what baldy said the other day is that actually a nickname you gave someone Baldy? Yeah, I, I do call someone baldy because, like, when he sweats, you can, like, see it on his head because, like, there's no hair to, like, drip it down. So it's all on his head. You need to, like, write a fan fiction about all these people that, you, that you've nicknamed at the gym. Be like, I'm going to write in their backstories. This is what I think this guy's past consists of. I guess. I'm not really good at knowing, like, how others' lives are unless they outright tell me. Well, that's what you make it up. You get to make it up. Be like, I think this this is my theory as to why this person hisses whenever he's working out. Oof, we're getting to ENFP right now. <laughs> You're right. We should stick to, to ISF, IS, almost as an ISFJ. ISTJ. All right. Let's see, um, these inspectors are comfortable when people know their duties, follow the guidelines, and operate within the rules. Rules are there to be followed, they say, not gotten around. I think around. we just established that. Yeah, I think this is fitting exactly what you just <laughs> said. Not to be 
not to be gotten around for personal reasons, amen, to that. For their part, ISTJs will see to it that standard, that goods are inspected and schedules are kept, that resources yep. will be up to standard and delivered when they say they are supposed to be. And they would prefer... Um, yeah? Oh, I just wanted to say I took that a bit literally. I don't actually handle deliveries at my job, but I do report to my boss if I think we're running low on supplies. Okay, well, it just it's basically illustrating the point that everything is meticulous and scheduled and it has to be right on par with what they yeah, believe. Yeah, pretty it to much. Be. Yeah. Unless my boss gives me permission to be lenient, in which case sometimes I do, but if she's like this is how it's got to be done, I get it done exactly how she wants me to do it. Even if I personally disagree with her methods, I'm like, "Nope, she's my boss. I'm doing it." Also very ISTJ of me. <laughs> I'm not even trying that hard to like be my type. Well, yet you're seeing all these patterns. It's it's kind of refreshing actually. That's because like you got the type for a reason. Like you could say, Oh yeah, she's putting me in the box, but I'm like, but you you got this type because it fits you. So it's going to I come suppose. out naturally. Yeah, yeah, guess so. Anyway. Ah, uh, let's see if it continues to paraphrase everything that you just said a few minutes ago. <laughs> and they would prefer that everyone's attitudes and actions be this law abiding. They can be <laughs> adamant about the need for rule compliance in the workplace and do not hesitate to report irregularities to the proper authorities. Oh, this is perfect. Because of this, they are often misjudged for having ice in their veins, for people fail to see their good intentions and their vulnerability to criticism. Um, I don't think people see me as having ice in my veins. No, I don't For once, I actually that. know what that refers to. I, I do think most people at my job think of me as a very kind and bubbly person, but at the same time, they also see me as a very duty-oriented person work focused person so like i think most people think that istjs are always one or the other i personally like to think we can coexist yeah just I... most istjs aren't comfortable like showing that side of themselves yeah that ice in their veins does not fit you at least from my perspective like i know that we don't work together maybe at work you're a bit more like okay we have to get the rules everything has to be right have to abide by everything set out like we don't work together at your job so maybe i see a different side of you the more laid back friend side of you so uh, maybe I mean, that accounts for I that i kind of show i kind of show both like my coworker came in today because she thought that i would need help because of the blackout turns out she came a couple of seconds after the blackout mm -hmm. and of course i was telling her like all the stuff that she needed to do and i was like double checking like no wait a minute is that up to protocol but, like, I was still, like, saying it in a nice voice. Like, I was smiling. And I'm like, oh, hey, like, hey, make sure not to forget to mop the floor. Like, I hope you do a fantastic job with it. Like, trying my best not to sound like a super evil over overlord. And, like, while we were talking, I was, like, talking about what I was grateful for and talking about my miracles. But, like, at the same time, making sure that every moment of my time was maximized where I was either letting her know what the rules were or doing my job while talking. Gotcha. Their interest in thoroughness, detail, <laughs> legality, standard procedures, oh, this is perfect, An orderly <laughs> flow of material leads this type to a number of occupations. I don't think all this is going to fit you, but as far as the thoroughness aspect underlying all of these, I think that's kind of what they're going for here, so keep that well, in mind. What I don't get is other types aren't like this. Like, this feels like just standard like you're supposed to do that or you get fired see i think it's I, i'm i'm meticulous too and very thorough but then i think you just take it to a new level i think that's all it is you that or i'm just a good employee and you're <laughs> not i don't know <laughs> i used to think that intuition was something that everyone had too and so i get <laughs> what you're what you mean because i'm like <laughs> And whenever I found out about Myers-Briggs and it opened my eyes to the idea that people can be, like, just how different 
personalities can work and not just like the, not just abnormal psychology like disorders i mean just regular people with perfectly healthy minds and lives can work so differently and it's okay it was like really it was <laughs> eye-opening to me well, I hope you're aware that it's actually scientifically impossible to actually open your eyes. It's just a figure of speech because what happens is that the eyelid closes over the eye to give the illusion that it's closed. But technically, the eye is like its own body part that's separate from the eyelid. Oh. I'm going to delete that from my memory bank <laughs> and keep reading. <laughs> Inspectors, oh, you wish. Can, don't do this to me, Paul. Don't torture me. Ugh, see this, this, this right here. We have too much of an ethical code to like torturing people. Oh yeah, you could have fooled me. You <laughs> see, now our relationship is aired for the world. This is. This is what happens whenever we talk. There are literal jokes every time I make a metaphorical statement and then part of my soul dies. That, that is what happens. That's the second horcrux now. I'm going to keep reading. <laughs> Inspectors can handle difficult, detailed forms and columns of figures, and thus they make excellent bankers, auditors, accountants, or tax attorneys. Investments in securities are likely to interest this type, particularly investments in mutual bonds and blue chip securities. Inspectors are not likely to take chances either with their own or other people's money, and the thought of a bankrupt nation, state, institution, or family gives them more than a little uneasiness. The idea of dishonoring um. a contract... Hmm? Oh, go ahead. Continue. Oh. Okay. The idea of dishonoring a contract also bothers an ISTJ. Their word is their bond. And they naturally communicate a message of trustworthiness and stability, which can make them successful in business. With their inspectors... Um, Continue. I'm sorry. I, I just I don't always you... know when the paragraph ends. <laughs> I mean, if you have something to say, I don't mind if you go mid-paragraph, if there's something you want to say. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, I just didn't want to be rude. I'm sorry. No, you're supposed um, to be interrupting me. Continue. Oh, okay. Um, so, <laughs> the whenever I read the descriptions of the types, I yeah. can never, ever relate to job descriptions. That's, like, always the one thing where I'm like, that is totally not me whatsoever. I feel like my job preferences are more of a me thing than a Myers-Briggs thing, because yeah. I... I think I'd be a terrible banker. I think I'd be a terrible... I know I'm a terrible cashier because I quit my job after I nearly got fired from it because I let a customer get away with $16 worth of free merchandise. $16.46, mm -hmm. I think, actually. And I quit before my boss could write a report about me. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I was a cashier once and I did horribly because I'm terrible at multitasking. Like, I cannot... Mm. I do all of it at once. I'm, I'm, I I'm good at multitasking, but not at a cash register because yeah. that's such a new, well, that's a bit of a tangent, but let's just say I've had experience with the register and I hated it. So I never apply for retail jobs anymore, uh, but everything else seemed pretty spot on. Like I remember when my friends Dan and Evelyn were about to get married, which um, I'm now the godfather of their their son. Oh, so that's where you found out me. about it. Found uh -huh. out about it when I went to visit you. Mm -hmm. I remember that. I remember whenever you got the call. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm glad I didn't ignore <laughs> it. Uh, so they had wanted me to go to their wedding so badly mm -hmm. that they took advantage of my personality type to make it happen. So what they did was they had one of their friends, and his name was Ken, and we sat down at a table at a restaurant, and since there wasn't any paper nearby, Dan grabbed one of the nearby napkins. Well, he's left-handed, so he would have used this hand. And he wrote out, I, Paul, do solemn." well, I don't remember his exact words, but it was something like, I, Paul, do solemnly swear that 
if myself and my wife fit these criteria, then I shall attend your wedding. And so I was like, okay, what are what is the leverage that you plan on giving to make sure that this is a worthwhile investment? And I said, we're going to provide a game room. And I said, a game room? And Evelyn's like, yeah, one of my bridesmaids is a game. And I'm like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, let's do this. <laughs> so I kid you not, if it weren't for that napkin contract, I would have not gone to that wedding. But because it was signed and and dated and had a witness there, I felt morally obligated to keep my word as to what was on that napkin. And even after they realized that, because they got married during COVID, even after they realized they couldn't keep their promise, I was like, well, I signed a contract, so I really can't back away from it now. And so I ended up going to the wedding, didn't really like it that much, but I was like, I signed a contract. My word is absolute. So what you're giving me a lot of really good ideas to ensure you come to my wedding. Oh, please don't. <laughs> I... <laughs> I know, I know you don't want to go to a wedding, so I won't make you, but it's it's tempting. I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I would... No. <laughs> no more napkin contracts? No, I'm not going to fall for that trickery anymore, because I'm pretty sure he was manipulating me, and I'm... I'm pretty I'm, sure I'm he was, learning too. how to see past that, yeah. Yeah. I just have to use a different form of manipulation, that's all. Well, now that I know you're doing it, now I can be on guard. Whenever you least expect it, expect it. <laughs> Yet another point to keep me on guard. Okay. <laughs> all right. We shall continue, and I will quit torturing Paul and, and making him <clears throat> assign some kind of theoretical contract to, to come to my future wedding. All right, uh, let's see, where were we? Yes, um, should I even continue the jobs since I don't think no. any of these are gonna fit you? No, okay. I'm, I'm pretty atypical ISTJ when it comes to jobs. Okay. I think I'd probably fit more of like an ISFP like job description, if anything. Because gotcha. I think they're they're more hands on with everything, and they like things that allow them to express themselves, which I really like as well. Okay, well, even I don't... though I don't think I'm like an ISFP at all, they're like no. very far removed from me. <laughs> I'm gonna well, I'll go ahead and finish reading it to say here is what Paul is not going to be. <laughs> Oh, so you're gonna you're gonna read? Oh, I thought you were gonna read the ENFP. You Never are mind. really gunning for the ENFP. Like maybe we should do oh, it yeah. for another video. This is already going super super long. All right, that's up to you. Yeah. So, sure. okay, everybody, here is what Paul is not going to get into on a career. With their inspector's eye, ISTJs make good librarians, dem dentists. I can't read today. Dentists, optometrists legal secretaries, and law researchers. I think I'd be a decent librarian, but everything else sounds miserable. <laughs> well, you got one for about 20 here, so. <laughs> uh, high school teachers of business, home economics, Ugh. and Ugh. <laughs> physical education, <laughs> civics, and history. Sex education and sex education and a non- Anatomy education, maybe, but not physical That's, education. You do like your medical science, so I guess, yeah. yeah. Uh, and history tend to be inspectors, as do quartermaster officers in the military. Ugh, no. <laughs> too, much, too much killing. I am so glad I read it. It was worth just seeing your expression whenever I read it. All right. Yeah, no, I don't think I don't think I'd be good with the military because it involves relocating. It involves being around a lot of dudes. Like I said, I like gender equality. I don't like it when one gender does one thing, and it involves a lot of like being willing to adapt on the spot, which is not something I like doing. Now that we've gone through a list of what Paul is not going to get into, <laughs> we shall continue. As a husband or wife, inspectors Ew. are a source 
I don't want to think that far ahead. <laughs> Skip this part, too. What? Well, okay. We owe it to the viewers. Think um. of the viewers. Okay, this is what Paul does not want to think about, everybody. You can cover your ears or take your headset uh. off. You can... Uh. I don't want to be rude to you, so I guess I'll be tortured. Okay, what about the underlying principles involved in here, like loyalty and faithfulness? Because I know you're really big on those, and it's mentioned here. Mm, well, they might get into stuff like, because some of these sites get into stuff like, how are the partners sexually? And it's like, I don't want to know that. I'm going to do whatever uh, the church wants, not what a personality book tells me to do. Then I'll skip any part. Let me see if there's anything like that. Um, there's, I don't, there's nothing directly, There's. it says about sensuality, but I mean, that's still not... I still kind of want to read it for the viewers and you don't have to say anything because, you know, I want everyone to have the full description. Whatever. Okay. Okay. Fine. Oh, okay. Fine. It's... Okay. Let me, I'll just skip that one sentence. Okay. How's that? Okay. Sounds okay. good. Let me just make sure it is only one sentence. Yes. Okay. As a husband or wife, inspectors are a source of strength. Just as they honor business contracts, so do they honor the marriage contract. Loyal and faithful mates, they take responsibilities to children and spouse seriously, giving lifelong commitment to them. In family matters, as in all other matters, duty is a word the inspector understands. The male ISTJ's concept of masculinity is patriarchal and he sees himself as the head of the household and breadwinner of the family. He can accept a working wife as long as she does not shirk her responsibilities to the children. So, so obviously a lot of this is super futuristic, so mm -hmm. I don't know whether to confirm or deny it, but a lot of what it said sounds like how I am just with friends. Yeah. And that's another reason why I think I probably won't get married is because I feel like my loyalty to my friends would be compromised if I were to get married. Like I've already pledged my friendship to so many people that if I were to have to uh, lessen that relationship, I don't think I'd like it too much. As far as the whole breadwinner thing, um, I actually think my INTJ friend thinks more about that than mm -hmm. I do. I am the type that says whatever gets the bills paid, whether it's the man or the woman, I think whoever has the most capable job should be the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. And whoever doesn't, stays home with the kids. I guess the part that stands out to me about this for you is you are... Uh... I know that you have emphasized, even in my own dating life, how you really want to make sure that a man that I am dating is loyal to me, is faithful, is not going to cheat on me. Like, you have emphasized that so hard to me. And so that's kind of why I wanted to read that, is because you have a very high emphasis in relationships to loyalty and faithfulness. So I don't see why anyone wouldn't, but... Uh, maybe the INFJ wouldn't. I don't know. Wait, what? Well, no, they're I'm... the door slammers. I don't think that I have ever actually door slammed. Like, I will... I will... The only time I have... The only one that I can think of whom I have actually, like, door slammed was that one guy who was threatening to turn my subscriber base against me because I would not have a relationship with him. Well, that makes sense. There are INFJs yeah. out there, and I know, and I know some, who, if like a relationship doesn't work out, they will cut off all contact with that person because they're like, my future mm -hmm. is of being a married, well, in this case, woman, and because you do not fit that future, I don't want you anymore. Your purpose was as a future husband. You have failed that purpose. We're done. And it's just like, oh. How my loyalty to my friend prevented me from wanting to rip her to shreds for that statement. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I always have like a foundation of friendship with anyone that I'm dating. I guess my first ex was not the case, but I was 17. I mean, what, what are you gonna? 
I, I was just happy to have someone interested in me at that age. <laughs> Because I was very shy and I did not get noticed much until I started learning how to socialize more. Um, So at that age, yeah, I was just happy to have anybody interested. But all ever since then, I've always made it a priority to be friends first. And that means that if the relational romance side ends, then there is always that firm foundation of friendship that was there even before the romance came ah, so, so maybe you're not an infj then because if you have all that loyalty and duty i do not believe that infj and loyalty is mutually <laughs> exclusive <laughs> i'm just messing with you i'm i know just... you're always messing with this this my friends is our relationship He's always messing with my head and trying to like gaslight me and and killing me with his puns and I'm sorry that the next paragraph is probably going to hurt your head because it's about parenting and it's oh, also boy. in the future but again I think you might find aspects well, that are relatable. Maybe I'll see if it relates to the teenagers I chaperone because I don't know. Yes, that's maybe. true. Yes, look at it that way. Look at them as being equivalent to how you'd be with your own kids. So. All right, I'll give it a try. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. In their parenting role, inspectors are firm and consistent in handling their children. They make the rules of the family clear and expect them to be followed. A rebellious, nonconformist child may have a difficult time with an ISTJ parent, and vice versa. Inspectors care about passing along their work ethic to their children and will often require them to help with household chores and projects. They patiently teach their children basic home maintenance skills, cooking, gardening, carpentry, time-consuming activities, which sometimes leave very little opportunity for them to play with their children. The mm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. A- Okay, there's literally just one sentence, so left. Okay. The inspector child is apt to be obedient and a source of pleasure to parents and teachers. And I could definitely see that of you being an obedient little child, a little bitty Paul who would follow yeah. every rule. Yeah, little me was obedient to a fault. I was, def- <laughs> I was definitely not the rebellious type. If the teacher said don't do it, I didn't do it. And I would always get very upset whenever my parents would punish me because I would never understand why I was being punished because I was like, I mm. followed all the rules. What am I doing wrong? And they'd say like, oh, you talked back. And I'm like, what does talking back mean? I don't understand what that is. Yeah. Because I guess maybe I took it too literally or something. I can see where that's not the most literal statement and you might be a little bit confused by it yeah well that is um Mm -hmm. a lot of it sounded very much not like me because from what this book is describing it sounds like it's describing an istj that hasn't developed their more ethical strong morals side yeah like it seems like this is the more of the strict one who's so focused on rules that they don't give any kind of credence to morality and like uh, Mm -hmm. values and stuff like that. When ISTJs actually have pretty strong values, they just don't always like to broadcast it to everyone. I am the exception because I have, oh, that stare. (laughs) Okay, I take it back. You're definitely an INFJ. (laughs) What was the the, uh, intent behind that? I'm listening to you. I'm listening intently. (laughs) Oh, I thought you were, like, trying to say something subliminally, but, oh, gosh, I got to get used to that. <laughs> I, <laughs> man, <laughs> like, I, I've, I'd seen the INFJ stare by Kara so many times, but now that you're doing it, it's like, I'm so used to her on the phone, I don't, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they say the INFJs and the INTJs have, like, this very deep, piercing stare that shows that they're like taking in everything that you're saying and trying to like make it all fit together into their established puzzle okay whenever you jarred away from me i thought 
Okay, is this the stance that Monica had in Doki Doki Literature Club at the end? Is that why he's reacting like this? Because this is how I tend to pose whenever I'm really deep in thought and I have something uh -huh. in front of me to rest my elbows on, so. <laughs> okay. So, um, regarding that parenting thing, I don't think most of it was accurate. I think the whole, like, being strict on the teenagers was relatively accurate because I did want to make sure they followed the rules, wanted to make sure they were where they were supposed to be at exactly the right time. If they were even a minute late, I'd be like, what the heck, guys? I told you this time. Why are you being flagrantly disobedient? Mm hmm I don't think I'd like to teach them stuff like gardening or carpentry because I don't see it as relevant. Like, who cares about gardening? Unless you're going to actually eat the stuff that you farm, like, gardening is just a hobby. Like, why bother teaching my kids about that when they can learn stuff that'll actually teach them better life skills? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess, I, I think that whenever it comes to MBTI, I think there always needs to be an accounting for things that you have, like, our MBTI is kind of more our baseline level of functioning, but then you're going to learn over, like, kind of the nature versus nurture debate. MBTI is more of your nature, whereas what you learn throughout your lifetime is nurture, and that's going to make even if you are more predisposed to functioning a certain way with a certain personality type, you're also going to learn a lot of skills that do not come naturally. And so it's going to yeah. impact how you behave around other people because you've learned things that did not come naturally. Like, I know that I'm a lot better at apparently talking and being able to explain points. And I'm actually, like, this is, this is not my own, like, this is not meant to come over as, as bragging. This is what a lot of my friends and teachers have said, that I'm really good with debate and expressing myself. And from what I understand, yeah. that's not typical for an INFJ. Actually, it's one of the INFJ's deepest fears is debating and hurting people's feelings. Like the nature of a debate means that you're challenging another person's point of view. INFJs and ISFJs are probably the types that hate it the most, especially because they're extra flashing red light. We can't say that. <laughs> you could do it without mentioning any flashing red lights. Well, let's just say that those types of all the types are probably the least um, able or willing to like really be assertive in terms of these are the rules this is the truth this is how it's got to be it also means they're the least likely to be like efficient and structured and time like good with time management they're the types that are usually very moment by moment or in the case of the infj thinking so hard about the future but not knowing how to get to that future yeah i <laughs> I guess it's very atypical then to say that I enjoy debating. I think it's yeah. fun to to make points and to be able to articulate them. It is a very it's a very intriguing mental challenge for me to be able to make strong points and support them. So that is I guess very unusual so, and that's something that I've developed I actually I always kind of enjoyed it, I think, but I, as far as the ability to do it well did not come until, I think it was middle school whenever I won my first debate in my literature class, but then I've only gotten better as time went on at, at expressing myself. So there is something to be said about like, I think that this is you from what I know about you, but I definitely see that you are far more empathetic and in tune with people than a normal ISTJ because you've developed that skill. You've developed- If you say so. You've, you've developed that skill. And I know that that's not like typical, like you didn't point out that not all of this fit you. They're a bit more, uh, you mentioned, I think it, you said earlier that this description does not take into account an ISTJ who cares about other people's feelings and who considers that. As no, I didn't say that. I said it doesn't take into account an ISTJ who has morals. 
moral because it's okay. it's the um there are certain types in Myers Briggs that are more about harmony. The mm-hmm. ISTJ is not one of them. We are the types that value hard work, responsibility, getting things done. People's yeah. feelings are typically more of an afterthought. Mm-hmm. I personally don't really agree with that approach, but I yeah. think that's mainly because I'm Catholic and it's like my duty to follow through with what Jesus says. So there's that duty again. <laughs> That's true. Whatever your duty is to have these elements of compassion and kindness and gentleness, then I guess you would lean more toward, hey, this is a type of duty in and of itself Yep. to be kind to people. And if I'm being kind to people in a way that is not explicitly explained in the Bible, then it's usually for some ridiculously selfish reason where I say like, oh, hey, I want to talk about the direct. This person's a gamer. I'm just going to go do it. I usually don't think, oh, is that going to bother this person? I think it later. And then I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. But in the moment, I'm just like (laughs) overcome by my excitement. Well, I I feel like there was something else I was going to say to that. Uh... What, you want to know about the direct? Well, I was going to say about the personality type, but I think it does. I Oh, yeah, that just generally the idea of having some kind of uh, faith, but really any moral code, whether it come from a particular religion or just some other way that people choose to order their moral lives by, just anything like that can also impact personality type because that's going to weigh into how... Well, it's not really going to weigh into the personality type in in what it is inside a person's head, but it's going to it's going to impact how their personality type manifests in their behavior and in their conduct. Like you mentioned about you value kindness and gentleness and other morals because it factors into the duty that is pretty much paramount in an ISTJ. So I suppose. But one thing that I've recently discovered that's a little bit of a gray area there is mm-hmm. that um, I have a couple of friends and family members who are Catholic, and you would think that they would share all my beliefs. But when I brought up lying to them, two of them were like, there are situations when it's okay to lie. And I was like, what? You can't be telling me lying is okay. And they were like pretty adamant about those exceptions saying like, no, in this instance, it is okay to lie. And I was completely shaken by that. Mm -hmm. And from what I've heard, that's pretty typical of ISTJs is like, even if they don't have a religion, there's typically like one or two things that they feel so strongly about. They cannot, will not bend past that moral standard. So in my case, I don't really know how to lie. I don't really like it when people lie. I know how to like mess with people, but like I make it obvious that I'm messing with them. But to outright like withhold truth from someone, I might not tell all of the truth, but I won't like outright tell a fabrication. That's yeah. more of like a function stack discussion. But um, let's just say that the ISTJ falls into that particular criteria. And most of the sources that you talk about Uh, they don't give a darn about the weaker parts of our personality. They just want to talk about the obvious. Weaker parts of your personality. What would you say that those are? Uh, I think our ability to um, really strongly believe in and have like a firm uh, emotional side. Like I think all ISTJs are actually like walking bags of hormones, but like they don't want to, admit it because if they do then that'll get in the way of needing to do what needs to be done how are you going to get the dishes done if you're constantly crying because then you'll have to wipe your eyes and that could get soap in your eyes and that's very painful how are you supposed to get your job done if you're constantly yelling at everyone why would you want to get angry then so ISTJs see emotions as obstacles in the way of productivity so therefore The best way to be emotional is to find the time and the place to do it. But Mm -hmm. then you also have to make sure that the person hearing your emotions is not going to take them the wrong way and misinterpret them. So then there's all of this 
-hmm. I guess you could say an analytical side where we think, okay, this person is just going to tell us what to do. So no, thanks. That's not what emotions are about. Gotcha. We also have a very silly and goofy side, which again, function stack talks about that. But the book doesn't. <laughs> we have a side of us that loves our humor. We can be the life of the party. Um, we can get everyone like doubling over backwards with our jokes. Not everyone likes our jokes because they're often like super literal and like taking popular sayings and making them like literally what they mean. But we do, um, we do love our humor. We do love making people laugh and we occasionally can have really surprising ideas. Uh, we just don't always like to implement them because that means, uh, our, com our comfort and our familiarity is be being violated. But usually when I like suppress those ideas, people will literally say like, what the heck, Paul, this is genius. In fact, I'll give you an example on my YouTube channel. Uh, when I wrote my face or, um, made the video talking about the novel trilogy that I had written. So many people are like, why didn't you get this published? This is incredible. And I was like, are you kidding me? The sentence structure was awful. The grammar was terrible. There were so many plot holes. Like I was critiquing it so much. And I was like, <laughs> it just doesn't make sense to get it published. So I guess maybe that's another reason why it's a side of the ISTJ and not the main focus is because we're so overly critical that when we do have these creative ENFP outbursts, we don't want to do it because we see all of the problems and mm. we see how it's not comfortable. It offers too much brand new, offers too much novelty, and that makes us uneasy. Yeah, and back on the note of ENFP, we should probably wait until another time because, I mean, we just yeah. gone through the ISTJ and we've been at this, yeah, it's 8.30 now, so two hours. <laughs> this is going to be the, officially the longest video on my channel. <laughs> that could help your watch hours. That's true, it will. That's true, but it's going to be especially a lot of editing, too. From, especially if they come from my channel. Yeah. By the way, no. after we... No, no, mm -hmm. I stand corrected. My audience is very selective about what they watch. Mm. I had someone it's... literally comment today, like, Paul, I haven't had time to watch through your whole video, so I'm just going to make a general comment about your demeanor, and then I'll watch it later, so <laughs> I should tell you something. Well, I guess we should go ahead and at least end the recording session now, but I hope that everyone out there watching learned a lot about ISTJs, in particular, Paul which he is only one representative of the ISTJ breed, but I hope that it was informative to at least hear a little bit of inside information from him. Do you have any? I mean, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure inside information would be pretty disgusting because I'm sure my stomach acid is still has the remnants of my dinner. Mm -hmm. Do you hate me, Paul? You must be. <laughs> um, I, no, I don't hate you. <laughs> but at the same time, like, it's, you like, you set yourself up for that one so clearly. I couldn't miss that opportunity. I need to learn to, I need to learn to, uh, be aware of everything that I say. I almost use a metaphorical statement there and I'm like, no, don't, don't say it. He's going to clamp onto it, and then it's going to be, again, another mess. He, that's, this is the way he ends our phone calls, too. Like, he just starts going. He's like, oh, it's about to be over. Let's just hit her hard with all these puns and these literal statements. Well, actually, um, I usually don't do a whole lot of literal puns around people that I don't know. So I guess that's a sign that I really trust you a lot. Well, that's good. I am glad to hear that. I guess it, I guess what it means is a positive thing, even if it, it, it kind of shrivels my soul. And, and you uh, have, you have no hair. It's blending all with the black. <laughs> does it, does it feel like I have hair now? That's better. Anyway, do you have any closing remarks? 
on the topic of ISTJ and MBTI in general. Yeah, I'm actually an ENFP. You're completely out of whack. <laughs> to be continued, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the debate will rage on in another episode. And then if it turns out I'm not an ENFP, then I'll be an ISFJ, because those are like the two that I get the most. Which is weird, because they're so different. <laughs> okay, guys. I guess we're going to sign off before my computer does it for me. Bye, everyone. See ya. Bye.